Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I know people will probably be logging in, um, so we'll uh, just keep an eye out for more to log in. Um, Lori was on here, but she must have gotten kicked out of the Zoom, so I'll keep an eye out for her. Um, okay, so I guess we can go ahead and get started. Um, and let's see. Hey, uh, Kathy, would you be able to uh, bay dots I for our opening prayer for us? Okay. Bay dots I. Dom oi om doki. Doki em pe do. A on ta da. They go na da. Da ta do de. Em tai do de. A hagya. A ya kum da. A ho doki. Oba. Aho. And I have not a clue if any of that's right. I wrote it down, you know. <laughs> so that was my first prayer. <laughs> awesome. Well, it sounded pretty good to me. Awesome. <laughs> you you um, had uh, some good words in there, had the right words in there anyway. <laughs> um, not awesome because I was afraid, you know. <laughs> It's always good to try to get practice um, praying because you never know when uh, we might be out in public and someone might call on us. So, <laughs> oh. um, well, thank you, Kathy. Um, and if you if you have any um, you know questions or if we, we need to translate you know some other phrases or things or if you expand it, just let us know and we can we can all take a look. Yeah, I mean, that's what I wanted to, I needed to know is, did that sound pretty much on, you know, I mean, as, I mean, should I say the words while, you know, like, say a sentence in Kiowa and then say the word, you know, say what it means, make sure I get it right, have it right. Um, know, so yeah. It might be helpful to uh, go line by line, like, I don't know if you have it written, sometimes it's helpful yeah. for our mentors to kind of see oh. it on the screen. Um. So that might be helpful for them to kind of give you some feedback. Um, but as far as like when you're actually praying, um, I've, I've heard people do it like it's kind of just whatever, whatever you feel like, whatever is most comfortable to you. But um, most of the time I notice um, people will just pray in Kiowa and then they, you know, sometimes they'll feel the need to do a translation at the end. Um, but most of the time, just praying in Kiowa is enough. Oh. Um, like for me, if uh, if I was asked to like pray like for a work function, like through work, then I would probably do like a English translation type of thing. But mostly if we're around Kiowas, we wouldn't necessarily need to translate it unless, you know, unless that's something that you feel like doing. Oh. Um, but yeah, let's see. Uh, I see. Uh, so we have Courtney, Tim, Kathy. I see Judith. And I see Grandma D. And maybe Aunt Carolyn. <laughs> oh. All right. Awesome. Um, so we just did our opening prayer and uh, Kathy uh, cried out her prayer for the first time. And she wanted to get some feedback. Um, from from one of our mentors. Uh, Kathy, do you want to do that now? Are you ready to, or are you going to do that later? I mean, if you had something, but you know, to do, I mean, that, you know, I, I mean, no, uh, I'm going to have to have it done. I mean, it's only <laughs> a couple of sentences. I tried to well, keep it short. So uh, uh -huh. the first uh, line, dom oi om da ki. Uh -huh. and that's, do you have it? Uh, do you have it written out so we you can share your screen? I don't. I got it on my paper. I got it on a paper. So I mean, I could let's let me um 
work on that. And maybe next week we can go over it. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I okay. think that's always a good practice for all of us to just hear how different people, you know, put their prayers together. And also it helps us to hear the translations too. So yeah, oh. we could do that next week. Awesome. Um, so I didn't really have like a lesson plan for today. I thought we could spend the time kind of uh, discussing uh, Saturday's uh, in-person credentialing interviews and kind of talk about how that went, um, share our experiences. And then um, I'd like to do some brainstorming so that we can kind of um, identify some of the things we wanna focus on um, over these summer sessions on Wednesdays so we can prepare for the next uh, round of in-person credentialing interviews in August. Um, so that's kind of what I was thinking for today. Um, how does that sound to everyone? That sounds good to me. I mean, because I want to do it in August, you know. Oh. Today's yeah. my birthday. Uh, what was that? <laughs> Today's my birthday. So. Oh my if, gosh. If, you know, Happy I'm birthday. Like <laughs> <laughs> I turned 60 today. So I graduated Ooh. from college last week. And that was one of my dreams was to graduate from college before I was 60. Hey, you did it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, there you go. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's possible. Anything's possible. That's what I like to say. Oh. Never too late. <laughs> and I made honors. That was awesome. I'm in art and um, American Indian studies. And I did the uh, magna come to something wow <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> that's a lot of work come to law there's something like that oh <laughs> that's Good. so cool i know I, I enjoyed seeing all the pictures that yeah, you had exciting. posted I mean, it was uh it was exciting because that's right. the that i mean yes grandma grandma B. Go ahead, Grandma D. Nothing. I just can't hear you. I mean, it went out a little bit. That was a uh, oh. Okay. <clears throat> we can hear you now. Um, you kind of cut in and out there for a second, but it sounds good now. Awesome. I see Alice Ann and Grandma Martha Nell. Hi. Hey. They own they bought son. Mm. Hello. <laughs> hey. Uh, and Judith is here, but she said she had to step away really quick. And Tim is on also, but he is uh, multitasking. So he's uh, listening in. Um, he, may, he may not be able to speak, but he's listening in to us. So, and Courtney's here, as you can see, she's multitasking. <laughs> What you working on this time, Courtney? I think the same thing, but I'm edging it. So, ooh, those are pretty. That's what, ooh, that's beautiful. Like, like <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Ooh, can't wait to see them <laughs> live and in person. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Um. So let's see, uh, we did our opening prayer and um, Kathy uh, said her Kiowa prayer for the first time and she wants to get some feedback from our mentors. So she's gonna write down um, her prayer so that she can share her screen next Wednesday and hopefully get some feedback from all of you. Um, and then um, I thought we could kind of discuss the uh, Kiowa language credentialing interviews that happened on Saturday and um, share some experiences, some thoughts. And then after that, um, I'd love to kind of do some uh, brainstorming to hear from everyone, especially the learners on what we should focus on in our Wednesday sessions to prepare for um, 
August for the August um, round of in-person credentialing interviews. So um, let's see. So I guess we can start um, with kind of reflecting on the in-person credentialing. Um, so I'm just kind of curious if our uh, mentors want to kind of open it up and just share some of their observations. Um, and let's see, I guess, uh, I don't know who wants to start. Um, maybe Grandma Martinell, are you able to share just your thoughts on Saturday? Yes, I think all the candidates that came in, the five of them, did very well on their portions of uh, speaking and uh, thinking of what they were doing there. And it, um, I think they put a lot of thought into it. They did well on their uh, their words, their pronunciation. Uh, and we had different things going on. It was not all the same thing. Some were getting tested just to see if they recognized some of the uh, um, things that we practice on here, you know, like your... Uh, uh, greetings um, and leaving someone and then the talking in the middle, you know, just conversation did well with that. And then we had, I believe it was two people that did their um, kinship terms and they were, um, one was really nervous. The other one was two, I think, but when they got started, they did okay. I thought that was good that to me, I always think that it's confusing when you try to think of the whole thing as um, um, a book or something, but for the men, my suggestion would be if they can learn to say their kinship uh, terms from their viewpoint, and then you know later on the other will come in it. And same thing with the female speakers. If you learn your side of the families, it's always easier because you're comfortable with it, and then you can figure out the rest of it as you get into it. That's what I, my suggestion would be. Oh, awesome! Aho, uh -huh, Grandma Martinell. Hyundai and Chai uh, Stock. Hyundai. Um, uh, Grandma Martha, the, my question for, is for you, and it's um, on that note for like level two. Mm -hmm. um, I know, I think we were to know all the different um, call or the, all the different forms mm -hmm. of kinship. Is that for both uh, sides, for male and female, or, or is that what you kind of mean is by knowing ours first? Okay. Um, the reason why I said knowing yours first, if you get comfortable with the female side of your family, and you kind of know how that mm -hmm. goes, if you're thinking of the other side and it doesn't fit with what you know, then I think that would help you mm -hmm. study for it better, I think. Um, and oh. uh, I would just practice little tiny sentences with it you know and um i think you said you had it on your phone so mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a good thing you know i thought about doing it with my phone put it all laid on there like that so when someone calls me i know who's calling me <laughs> that's, a, that's a good practice too uh mm -hmm. one other thing i wanted to say was um in um speaking with the candidates the other day uh one of the people testing said he's working on his stories the stories you have to do and uh he'd get to a certain part and he said it could get a little bit off confused and uh and then dane mentioned to him he said well what you're talking about is you're already into getting into level three and it surprised him you know without thinking about it he's already moved a little bit into that plateau so you guys do real well you pick it up and you you get to that point and maybe not even know you're in there <laughs> i was proud of him for doing that wow that's yeah. awesome so mm -hmm. did he did he actually do um like one of the stories there or was he kind of just uh explaining what he was doing um he i don't know if he ever gave us the name of the story that he was doing but when he was explaining some of the words you know he was looking for in there the meaning uh and dane recognized that story real quick so that's what he told him he said because you're doing kind of above that level no wonder he couldn't, you know, get his hands right on his words and stuff. So, <laughs> I think he was surprised too. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So so is that like a hint for level three? Does level three mean that we'll have to translate the story? 
<laughs> well, I, I know they have to do that somewhere in there, do a story. So, <laughs> and um, you know, when you start working on the stories like that, it seems real big because it's uh, it seems like a lot there. But if you break it down in small parts and kind of get the feel for the story, I think you'll do it's just fine. I think you'll do fine with it. But that's why uh -huh. I look at it. They still look at it as a big, scary big old story there you know just taking it little increments at a time oh uh -huh. that's awesome um the uh i guess like for me on the stories um i really want to know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. i can kind of get a sense of what what i'm saying just by hearing it and kind of reading it but I'm I'm kind of like because I was talking with Nelson about that also like just wanting to find these words and some of the words like you can't easily like they're not in the glossary you know they're not in like these easily accessible places because they're different words than what we are used to hearing every day mm -hmm. and um so that's kind of what I'm interested in but it's uh I think for me I'm still trying to figure out like where one sentence, like a thought ends and then where another thought begins. So mm -hmm. looking out for like the na or ga, like that type or like, hey, ga, like some, some say like, hey, ga is like a kind of like a placeholder. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's, uh, that's something that I'm still trying to uh, work on is getting familiar with like, what's a, which parts of those written stories when you hear them are like a complete thought and then like going to the next one yeah, mm -hmm. so that's just getting used to the format i guess or the flow of yeah, yeah. That one. Mm -hmm. but it takes time <laughs> <laughs> take your time too well to kind of soak in the whole meaning of the story when you finally get through it and then kind of worry about saying it again but the more you look at it the more you say it the better you'll I mean the more comfortable you get with it and you'll do better you know it'll just come to you it's hmm. just it's just the way it is you know? like I think Dorothy mentioned now to someone that she says like when you're telling a story uh they'll say um they'll start their stories like that because they're saying once upon a time, these people were living there. It's kind of like that story, you know, opening it up. And then whatever that story is will start coming together. So that's the way I would kind of look at a, uh, translating the story. It's really oh. kind of like, a, you know, stories we learned at school when we first start reading that kind of thing. Like think more general, not so literal, I guess. Right. Uh huh. Just you know, general words and thoughts on it. See, yeah. that's where I get hung up. Is I get hung up because I want to like find out every single word, like what it means. <laughs> so, I gotta practice. <laughs> um, you know what's kind of helped though is when we when we've uh kind of gone line by line, I guess, and translated mm -hmm. those uh, Kiowa culture program recordings. Mm -hmm. That's really helped me to kind of get a little bit more familiar with like, you know, what, how, how, how are our stories kind of structured, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That, did that address your question, Courtney? Oh. Awesome. Aho, Grandma Martha. Mm -hmm. um, Grandma D, would you like to share any uh, thoughts or kind of your observations from Saturday? Well, <clears throat> everyone, uh, I go for pronunciation. I know what you're doing. And, and Saturday was. Um, uh, Everyone did well on that, and and your uh, greetings, the questions, you know, a little conversations, so those went well. And I also would like to say that I really 
it was really difficult for me because I was under physical pain. Mm -hmm. And and it it interfered with what uh I could apply my attention to. I couldn't do it as well as I would like to have. So oh. so anyway, Martha did I mean everything that I agree with everything that Martha Nell said. Oh. And giving you um uh, feedback as to what you know uh, candidates could work on. Oh, well, Grandma D, I didn't realize you were in that much pain. And so we really appreciate you taking the time to be there despite that. That was, yeah, really appreciate that. And I hope, I hope uh, you're feeling better. Thank you. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh. Um, let's see. So I see a few of us on here that um, went through the uh, interviews on Saturday. So let's see. Um, I don't know if Tim's able to uh, speak at some point. Um, Tim, just let, let us know if you'd like to share something. But um, I'm wondering if uh, yeah. Judy, if you'd be able to kind of share your experience and observations from Saturday. Oh, <laughs> I. You uh, thought it was going to always and then they decided to always that. I was, um, I was worried, you know, kind of nervous at first to do interview. But I don't know why, but um, yeah. Yeah. it seemed like once we got in there, uh, once I got in there, it yeah. was not real bad. I was pretty comfortable. But I had I have been working on a lot of uh, things and trying to study and such. But you come to a point where you're sitting there, and it's like you're in the hot seat and you don't know what to expect. And it's kind of real, kind of scary. And at one point, Dane, and this is, I couldn't believe this happened. At one point, Dane asked me who Velma was and her name just completely left me, completely. And I was sitting there, and I, was going, I know, I know, I know, I know. But I couldn't, I couldn't say her name. It was just like someone just turned the light off or something. And then um, she said her name. He said something. But I, then I thought, well, why didn't I ask her her name? You know, why didn't I say? You know, I should have asked her her name. And I should have said hot so I'm kind. You know, and I didn't do it, but. That was kind of that was embarrassing. <laughs> that was embarrassing, but but um, I I thought it went pretty well. I I did, and I think I could have you know asked more questions or said more things, you know. Um, but I I tried, I tried, and it, and I was comfortable once I got seated and was going through everything. And I really appreciate our mentors, you know. Because without them, it just wouldn't be possible. Oh, Bob. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh, Judy. Yeah. Um. That's uh. That's it's uh. It is very nerve wracking. <laughs> but you did it. Got through it. So. <laughs> um. And uh, what is it? They say hindsight is twenty twenty. So every time you'll always like look back and be like, oh, I should have done this or I could have done that. But um, it sounds like you did enough to uh, to be able to get through it. So <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll see what their what the uh, board's official uh, feedback is for us. Um, but yeah, that's. I'm just glad that uh, we had the opportunity. To do that and to you know even if we didn't maybe do as well as we wanted to at least we tried and you know we have that opportunity to try again um and something that i was really proud of i was so proud of cody to show up and do and get uh, oh. her i think she went for level one right oh, oh. yeah I was so proud of her because I know she she just barely started coming to our sessions. I know she went to all of the uh, OU 
uh, classes, you know, right. but mm -hmm. um, she just barely started with our sessions, you know, a couple, like, seems like a few weeks ago, <laughs> like late, halfway through and she jumped in there and went and did level one. I'm, I'm so excited for her. So, and it sounds like she's, uh, she's thinking of, you know, teaching and maybe working at one of the um, elementary schools in Norman. So mm -hmm. that is really exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's good. Pretty good. Um, let's see here. So I guess I'll share some of my uh, observations. Um, so I was really nervous. <laughs> and I kind of felt the same way, Judy, like, where like, I was just sitting there and like, uh, uh, everyone's <laughs> asking me questions, and I just like go blank. <laughs> and, uh, I, I would just like, man, I should be able to answer that. But it's just like, my brain is just shut off or something. <laughs> So um, it just it just felt like, you know, at first it was like a lot of pressure because I, you know, I feel like got to got to get it all like perfect and got to get it all accurate. But, oh. you know, once once they did a, a couple rounds of asking that I got more comfortable and I was able to be like, OK, I could I can maybe breathe a little bit <laughs> and um, act, you know, a little more natural. But I was super nervous. Um, and I thought about doing the kinship. And then um, when I heard Nelson was going to do it, um, I was like, oh, I should try it. But I haven't really studied the kinship a whole lot. So I need to brush up on the kinship terms. And so I think I'm going to use uh, Courtney's tip and, and just, you know, put them in my phone <laughs> or my contacts for my relatives and practice that way. Um, and then I know that uh, last week Cricket showed us the uh, study stack. Um, so we can kind of practice on there too, but yeah, it was, uh, it was very, um, you know, nerve wracking, I guess, uh, for me and, but it ended up being a lot of fun. And I really also enjoyed just talking with, um, everyone who was in the waiting room, you know, and getting to kind of practice and talk with each other. That was a lot of fun too. Mm -hmm. Kind of trade trade ideas and mm -hmm. tips <laughs> with each mm -hmm. other. Um, so that was, uh, I guess, um, what I would say to uh, learners that are preparing for August for the conversations. Um, basically, they did um, everything that we've studied up till, you know, last week. So uh, the um, basically the lessons one through six. So if you can, if you can answer and ask, like respond to, and then ask those questions based on lessons run one through six, you'll be able to do just fine. Um, and if you can go farther than that, that's even better. But um, I was really excited because all of the phrases were pretty comfortable. Um, and at least I'd kind of heard it before, so I can kind of think of okay, what's the appropriate response here? Um, so that wasn't that wasn't too bad. So just you know, go back and study and practice, and all the conversational practice that we've been doing really helped for me anyway. Um, so those are my thoughts. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm curious, um, Aunt Carolyn, are, are you, would you be able to share some of your observations just as, you know, being, uh, being there as a kind of an observer? Uh, Mom said you need to work on grammar. <laughs> grammar. Uh. So, and um, I didn't see uh judy and i worked together and i think it was more of a of uh judy what did we did we do the conversation we just went through the study yeah. stacks judy yeah. and i just went through the study stacks and either oh. she would answer or i would answer or i would say it after her or she would just re repeated back and forth with each other which was helpful or or we if we tried and then a couple of things you know we didn't know and then once we 
practice and we would remember the answer or the conversation and how to, to go back and forth through the conversation. So I thought that was helpful to for the candidates to work with each other in a group. Oh, oh. And we went through as many as we could, as fast as we could, and that it was really good. That was good practice. And you yeah. said you said you used uh, you just went to the study stats. Oh, that's awesome. There, uh, Linda pulled it up on her computer for us to look at. Nice. And Melody. Monday. We both struggle when I we were talking about your name. I wanted I asked you what your name was. I mean the way I, I wanted to ask so that ask in a way that I was asking you about your name. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, that was good practice and conversations so that that oh. so we both learned what your what wind songs were. Dome dog, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was awesome. And that that uh threw me threw me for a loop, but you know, I guess I should be prepared. Uh, because I would probably want to ask someone, you know, if I'm meeting someone and they tell me their Kiowa name, I'd want to be able to ask them what it means. Mm -hmm. So that was really helpful. <laughs> okay. Awesome. And then uh you mentioned grammar practice. So Grammar, I think, is uh, everyone's kind of biggest uh, challenge. So that's kind of one of the things we were talking about last week. We want to focus on over the summer, over the next couple of months, is look at grammar and really kind of study, <laughs> study the grammar. So that's that's one thing. Well, aho. Um, anything else, uh, Aunt Carolyn? No, not not right now. Not that I can recall right now. Oh, uh ho. Awesome. Uh let's see. Uh Tim, are you able to uh to share any thoughts? I know you might be busy. I see your mute moving. Well, Tim, just let us know if you want to uh, chime in on anything. Hande, I'm sorry about Courtney. Courtney. Hande. What, what were you talking? I wasn't here to hear what you were talking about because I use my phone a lot. What were you talking about? Oh, With on the, the contact on, on your on your phone contacts. Uh, oh. Change every change everyone that is on your uh, phone contacts in with in your kinship. Um, to how you would call them in Kiowa. Mm -hmm. oh. So golf boy, golf boy. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um. Con, those so just different the different oh, terms okay. oh, and then that. um for like people that you would call by name like the kids i have them in there with their kiowa name oh. um so if you know those ones and you can change it um in your contact list and save it and then especially if you talk to them often <laughs> oh. um then you'll be seeing it and hearing it and saying it all the time oh. to call them you know you really have to think about mm -hmm. it <laughs> oh <laughs> what w the yeah. first time you do it you know whenever you change them but yeah it's uh it's really helped me oh. to do that Change the channel and the oh. Hyundai inside that for me. Hyundai, sorry. <laughs> uh, to follow up on that, uh, do you use? Are you using the calling to form, or what form of the kinship would you use? 
what um how calling to them yes calling to yeah okay mm -hmm. awesome <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna work on that the, to to me the other one that's like kind of that grammar part of it is then you know if you practice those as your grammar no ah uh, then that's uh if you practice it like that and think of it like that then you'll know all of those different terms for them they don't change too much the um and you'll so you'll start to see a pattern um on study stacks too uh you can it's really hard for me because with uh teaching and everything like seeing looking on the screen a lot i really like things on paper <laughs> so uh the one thing i did too on the kinship is there's a if you scroll all the way to the bottom on study stacks it has the whole list of the terms uh for female and then the male ones and you'll see that pattern with the different my uh your or his or her sister um you'll be able to see that on there if you and and i guess for me it's easier to read it like that than sometimes trying to look and study the different charts because i'm just trying to get down the terms so that's another thing that i think really helped me a little bit but it's kind of all just whatever what you um prefer in your learning style, I guess, too. Oh, so. well, that's helpful, though. That's good to mm -hmm. hear different, different, uh, what is it called? Modalities of learning. Oh. <laughs> that's awesome. So uh, I just wanted to share that my 11-year-old um, daughter, um, she wants to go for level one in August. And so she told her older sister, <laughs> my college daughter, <laughs> that they're going to study this summer. So they asked me, the 11 year old, she asked me to print out the sheets that we've been working on. So they ha she has her little binder. Now they got their little binder. So we'll see. We'll see if they get ready. <laughs> I said, good. Pretty soon I'm just going to be talking to you just in Kiowa. That's it. <laughs> So we'll see, see if they're ready by August. Um, let's see. So I know we have some that uh, weren't able to make it on Saturday. So I just wanted to see if anyone who, you know, is listening in, if you have any questions for any of our mentors or for any of us who uh, were there this past Saturday. Okay. Well, if you think of something, just stop us and um, or put it in the chat. Um, let's see here. So what I wanted to do next is do some uh, kind of brainstorming. Um, let's see. I, I'm not sure what. Uh, let's see. Grandma Martha Nell or Grandma D. Monday um, Masai thaw. Oh, <clears throat> um, do you know what weekend the language board is looking at for August so we can kind of do some preliminary planning or is that still under discussion? I don't think we picked an exact date, but I know he said in the latter part of August, probably before I'm thinking before school starts up again. That's what I think. Okay. But I remember the exact date that he said are we picked. Yeah, not during Indian fair time, right? <laughs> no, it's not going to be that week. We already called that one out, but it may, it may be the following weekend or something. But it's and of course we're getting close to school beginning too, so I know they don't want to schedule it. You know, when everybody's busy getting ready to go back to school with the kids and everything, and us too. Yeah. Oh. So maybe mid August, maybe. I think we're. Okay. About do you think it'll? Do you think it'll be on a Saturday again? I think so. 
<laughs> think more people can make it if it's Saturday. Yeah. Oh. It's in the weekday. Yeah. So maybe like the 12th or the 19th of August. Yeah, one of those two, I think, is what he was looking at. Okay. Cool. So, so uh um let's see. Oh, Courtney, I saw your question. It's uh from what I gather, the first weekend in August. What is it? End of affairs, uh, what is it, the third, fourth, and fifth, or something like that? Something like that. They have a flyer that I saw on Facebook. I have to go and look, find it again, but uh, it's that first weekend. Mm -hmm. It's not a whole week, is it? It's only a few days this time, huh? Yeah, I think it ends on Saturday. Saturday being the last day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I know my kids got all excited when they saw that. They're like, we can go ride the rides. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll see. That's always fun. <laughs> um, okay, so I know for some of you who may need to travel in from out of state to do the in-person interviews, or if you would like to, it sounds like if you're making travel plans, just you know, think about those two middle weeks, middle Saturdays of August. Looks like either the 12th or the 19th will most likely be um, the next in-person credentialing and be sure you confirm it with our language board before you make official travel plans, but just so you have a ballpark date to shoot for. Um, okay, so let's do some brainstorming um, and kind of think about the things that we need to study and prepare for uh to do either the level one or the level two um credentialing in august um so as far as like for anyone who's going for level one um we went over i think it was either last week or the week before we went over um there is an extra step for the level one credentialing and it's uh, that professional development checklist that um, you have to complete and submit to the language program, the Kiowa Language Department. And uh, that way they can get that to the credentialing board. So they have like officially who, who's going you know, to be participating. Um, and that's for level one. You don't have to resubmit it if you're doing level two because level two assumes that you've already completed all of those professional development trainings um, when you did level one. So at least that's as far as I understand. Um, so does anyone have any questions about level one credentialing, any of the components? All right, I don't hear any. Um, so let's think about level two credentialing. So we know that there's um, additional components other than the um, in-person kind of conversation interviews. Um, so let's see, has anyone um, gotten a, does anyone have any questions about any of the level two components so far? On the level two, um, this is Alice, sorry, Hyundai Inside Doll. Um, I am looking through the drive and um, is there a list of what we are required for the level, uh, credentialing level two? I'm Good looking question. at the job right now, so. Good question, I don't. One that was kind of laid out for us, everything that was needed. Oh. So just... 
Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, I think someone asked about that a few sessions ago and uh, Dane said that he was working on something, but um, let's see, I can pull up the drive, but if, if you can't find anything in there, then he's probably hasn't finished it. Um, let me see, I'm gonna try to uh, share my screen really quick so we can um, take a look at it. Uh, let's see, where is it at? Okay. All right. Okay, can you see my screen? Oh. Oh. Okay. So I guess when the level two pops up, it should be here, like in the uh, um, the main folder, the credentialing study material. Um, it looks like the most recent um, one, most of these are from 2022, so they haven't been um, added to. So I'm sure that, uh, I know Dane said he's gonna work on the level two, um, kind of like a little checklist, like, like for level one. See, here's the level one, um, that checklist. And so he's working on something similar for level two, so we can have all the steps. Um, but based on what Dane has shared with us, so the, uh, the conversation, that was the interview. And then we, there's a grammar part and the grammar part, um, is kind of a, a next level from level one. Um, so, and I believe uh, Dane is working on updated um, level two grammar materials. Um, so be on the lookout for that within the next couple of weeks. Um, that will be, that will correspond more with the level two. Um, so for uh, pronunciation and reading, you have these folders here. So if you click on level two, um, so we would pick one of these stories. And so let me, uh, open up one of the documents. So here's the story and it's written just in Kiowa. And what we would do is we could listen to the audio recording and follow along. And then what we have to do for level two is we actually have to read this out loud and record ourselves reading it out loud and try to sound as close to the speaker in the recording as possible. So um, I know Dane, Dane had an example of, you know, you'll record yourself the first time and you listen back to it and you'll kind of hear, you know, where you're, you kind of needed to work on and then do it 10 more times. And by the 10th time that you record yourself, you'll start to hear some of the differences. And so each time, you know, listen to the recording of the speaker here and then follow along and then try to pronounce uh, the story in a similar way. So that's, um, and then if you want feedback, Dane said you can uh, email him or um, uh, text him, message him, um, and he can give feedback. And then when we're ready to submit, we could, uh, let's see, I think he said he was going to, um, have a folder here that we could submit things to. Um, so I think that's what we did for level one is he, he had this submissions folder that we uploaded our pronunciation PowerPoints in. Um, so I think he's gonna set something up similar for level two. So if we choose this first folder, we only have to do one of these stories and record ourselves reading it and then submit it. Um, if we choose the second folder, the Miss Gonzalez stories, um, we need to do two of these because these are a little bit shorter. And so we would do two of these and the recordings are all here. And so we would just record those. And then the, the second component of the pronunciation for level two is we need to download this PowerPoint here and see all the little uh, speaker icons. We need to record ourselves because Dane recorded his own voice on these. And so we need to record our voice saying each of these things. 
And, and you can see it's very similar to the language that we've been practicing all spring. So these will look really familiar to you. And so we just record ourselves and then kind of like what we did for level one, you would just submit the recordings or the PowerPoint with your recordings um, to Dane. And you could email it or put it in the Google Drive and share it with him um, or you know message him the recordings. Uh, so that's for level two. So there's two parts. One is doing the PowerPoint recording and then doing a story reading, whether it's from the first folder or the second folder. Does that make sense to everyone? Uh, awesome. Let me go back uh, out to the main folder. OK, then the other part is the kinship, which um, I think the best place. So th these are all the full kinship charts with some of you. You know, we've said that these can be really overwhelming. Um, so the best way to study for the kinship is to um, go to the study stat. And like what Aunt Carolyn and Judy were saying that they did is pull up the study stats and they're, the levels are marked out for the kinship in um, the study stats. So you can go right to the, whether you're doing level one or level two. Um, and then there's also some examples of spaced repetition recordings, which we did that um, for level one um, as a, a study method to just practice um, your pronunciation. So that's another um, option for studying. So that's as far as I know on these. Um, let me go to the study stacks. Let's see. <laughs> On names, I saw um, Monday. Melody. Uh, no lesson plans this on level two, just these four components. As far as I know, that's a good question. Um, uh, let's see. Let's ask uh, our um, board members here. Grandma Marthanel or Grandma D, do you know if uh, for level two, do we need to prepare any lesson plans like we did for level one? I thought I heard Dane say not. Okay. Saturday, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope. So off the hook on that, I think level two is more focused on our language mm -hmm. um, use and language learning. Um, okay, let's see. So this is, this is kind of small. Let's see. Let me go back here. Okay, so the nouns, pronouns, verbs. So here's level two. Um, it's kind of separated out. So you have the kinship terms and some grammar practice here. Um, for anyone who's going for level one, um, even for level two, it's a good refresher to start with level zero. So whenever you do level zero, basically it's uh, gonna help you get prepared and get more comfortable with some of the terms that you'll use in level one and two. So if you feel like you, you just want to like kind of take a step back and do a refresher, then you could look for the level zero ones. Um, so the kinship terms are here. Um, and then the different uh, Kiowa grammar. So it's the one that says Kiowa NVP for noun, verb, pronoun. And it'll differentiate between level one and level two. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to um, practice those. And it has the different uh, types of <laughs> nouns. So um, let's see. Mm. Let me see if anyone's trying to log in. So let's see, does, um, did that answer your question, um, Allison? Ah. Uh. Awesome. Um, so what we were thinking for our Wednesday sessions is uh, Dane is going to um, start joining us um, more often for Wednesdays. Um, and he's we're going to have the breakout rooms open again for everyone. So 
That way, if like you want to pair up or get into a small group and practice um, some of these things, or if you just want someone to kind of to bounce ideas off or to kind of, you know, help with pronouncing, pronouncing some of the uh, terms here, um, we could certainly do that. And I think we also, uh, Cricket had a suggestion last time of um, looking at the study stacks and practicing the kinship terms and the grammar in study stacks and kind of using that where we could like do what we're doing now and share our screen and then we just take turns saying the terms on the cards. Um, so does that sound like um, something that everyone's interested in doing um, for this for our sessions this summer? Would that be helpful to you? Um, all right, awesome. Um, so let's uh, do some uh, voting for next week um, because I know that we can we can have breakout rooms, but um, oftentimes um, you know we'll have our mentors in in uh, the main room uh, if we do have breakout rooms. So is there a particular order that we want to start with? Like, do we want to do like kinship terms for? level one, kinship terms for level two, and then go to grammar and then going through the different, like do a different um, section each week, or what would be most helpful to all of you to support your learning? For me, it would be grammar. Oh, I'm with you there. <laughs> Me too. Oh, that's a good question. Um, so Courtney has a question in the chat for um, us. And uh, this is also for um, our mentors. Um, so she's asking, would it be feasible to do a 30 minute breakout room rotation and have one mentor in each room? So basically we could be in a breakout room for 30 minutes and then maybe switch either back to the main room or switch to a different breakout room after 30 minutes. Um, what do our mentors think about that? I think that's a good idea because we could all cover different parts or different things, mm -hmm. over different things, I, different areas of the language. Oh. oh, yeah, good, good. Uh, so Courtney has uh, some examples. So like we could have one breakout be focused on grammar, one doing the conversation practice, mm -hmm. one doing the kinship terms, and then one doing like reading the story out loud. And then we could switch them every uh, every 30 minutes or, you know, 20 minutes or so. I think that's, that's a good idea also. Um, I think as long as we have a, uh, Mentors who'd be interested in supporting those. We could always do uh, one in the main room, like in this room here, and then have like one, two, three other breakout rooms set up. So that way people could go into the uh, room that they want to focus on first. And then we could all just kind of switch. We can do the timer and all that. All right, well, we'll try it out and see how it goes next week. <laughs> I like that. that. Yeah. Um, hey, out, out of curiosity, Melody, you know how we had Norman and Inadarko and Tulsa? Mm -hmm. um, what happened to all our language people? That's a good question. <laughs> so <laughs> there were so many of us. <laughs> yeah, oh. there there are, there were. Um, so let me let me stop sharing this. Uh, so so basically from from my understanding, and then I'll I'll let um, others uh, speak up. But uh, from my understanding, it 
Um, basically, we had the five different locations or the five different areas because of the ANA federal funding that the tribe had for five for well, it was more like six years. Um, and that funding ended in July of 2022. And so I guess the the tribe had to take on the um, language department and they kept created the, you know, the language language department. And um, so the language program has been applying for different grants and they didn't get uh, funding, like enough funding to kind of continue doing the same thing and have the same setup that they did for the ANA federal funding. Um, however, um, I heard uh, last uh, on Saturday, the language program director, uh, Lily Pinnell, she was saying that they have a very promising uh, grant funding opportunity um, that yeah, yeah. Uh, they are, you know, working on, kind of finalizing the details, and they're looking at actually getting um, some of the credential teachers that have already gone through level one, that did level one last year, looking at getting some teachers into some classrooms and basically being able to cover their some of their salary. Um, through the tribe, through the language department. So that's one of their goals. And I think they're working on that. Um, but Lily seemed pretty um, excited about that because the Kiowa tribe also uh, got, um, basically became official with the um, Oklahoma State Department of Education. Um, and Kiowa language is now certified through, the tribe has submitted all the paperwork that they needed to submit to the Department of Education so that um, Kiowa language, if it's being taught in a public school in Oklahoma, it can count towards the world language credit for high schoolers to graduate. So all, all the schools have to do is, you know, make sure that they're referencing the, the Kiowa tribe in that, you know, in there, when the schools reach out to the Department of Education to get their courses um, certified. So that's really exciting. That's awesome. Great. Thank you so much for the information. Oh, and uh, also kind of along those lines, um, it's it's kind of like a lot because of this past year, everything's kind of just been kind of up in the air with like funding and everything. And so everyone's kind of just been doing different uh, language sessions on their own. So like, for instance, uh, Ramon, he facilitates the um, the Tulsa Zoom class on Tuesday evenings, uh, and they partner with the Zero. Is it the Zero Zaro, Zaro, Zaro. Zaro um, mm -hmm. Library, and in Tulsa, and they um, so Ramon facilitates that class on Tuesdays, and then there's some in-person classes going on. So there's um, in um, Anadarko, uh, Julia, Julia Knoll. She, um, Akima, she facilitates, um, I think she did it in April and May. I think it was like a certain, certain number of weeks, but she did an in-person session on Wednesdays in person at the uh, HHS building that the Kiowa tribe has in Anadarko. And also um, there's, uh, let's see, I'm forgetting there's another in-person class. Um, oh, Lance White at Carnegie AOA. Oh, that's right. At Carnegie AOA, Lance White, he facilitates um, a kind of a class, a session, um, mostly with the elders, but they live stream it on Facebook. So you can always tune in and that's Wednesday afternoons. What is it like? Is it one o'clock or two o'clock? Something like that. One, I believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then, uh, oh, and then once a month, I think it's once a month, uh, for in Norman, the District 7 um, legislator uh, hosts the a Kiowa language in-person class in Norman. Um, I think it's on Monday evening, right? It's the second it's Monday. Monday. Yeah, second Monday of each month, yeah. Second Monday. And do they still have a Zoom option? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. So those flyers, I've seen them on the District 7 um, Facebook page. 
So be on the lookout for those because those are, um, they always put a flyer out and they, they try to post the flyers on the Kiowa Tribe website too. Um, and then what I heard uh, Ramon is um, the spring, he started doing some enrichment, uh, mm -hmm. Kiowa language kind of mini classes with the students at uh, Carnegie High School this past spring. And he's um, really hoping that um, Carnegie High School will actually have a Kiowa language class that Ramon will be able to teach um, at Carnegie High School starting in the fall in August. So that's that's pretty pretty exciting. Um, so that's kind of what what uh, at least what I've seen that is going on. Um, does anyone else has has anyone else noticed um, any Kiowa language sessions or anything going on? Oh, nice. <laughs> so maybe, you know, because because there's some of us that are asking that question, I'm kind of wondering if like the language program could post or publish kind of like a, I don't know, like a calendar or a directory or something where you could oh. see all that information in one spot, you know? Oh. Um, Delta. Um, Sunday. Sunday. Um, <clears throat> I know back in the fall, especially in November, because it's Indigenous Month and in all, um, Lily would be getting calls in the office, you know, for uh, asking, they would call asking for different uh, uh, teachers to go out and help at the schools or do, you know, speak, and take the Kyle language out. And, and I went to um, Grace Mont. And I did a presentation with the younger kids. Well, actually, it was all of them. Even the seniors were in there and played some games and done some um, power language through games with animals, animal names. And <clears throat> we also went in and uh, uh, she had asked me to go to Apache. And I don't know what was going on that day. I was headed down that way. And then something had happened there at the school. So uh, they had to cancel out. And then I was asked to come up to Oklahoma City, and this was in November also, to a um, facility, I can't think of the name of it, here I go again, CARE something that's on the north side of Oklahoma City. And what they do is they service all the, all people in Oklahoma City, you know, and they have a lot of counselors for everything you can imagine. And they had asked me to come in and speak about the Kiowa, Kiowa language program and some of the kids and also at the same time they knew that I was a retired teacher and they had asked me about boarding school also they wanted me to talk about Riverside so that was good that was that was really and they they really appreciated that because in that whole facility they just had two employees that were uh, actually indigenous there so they'll be they'll be doing that. They'll be calling, you know, asking different people to come out and help at different schools. And they know to call Lily now. They need somebody to come out, which is good. It's a good thing. It's Kataiga. Kataiga. Oh, that's awesome. That's and so I'm exciting. Also, <laughs> yeah. Also, I was invited and I'm going down there this month. Well, in June, middle of June, I'm going to Fort Worth, Texas to a school down there. And they asked me to come down and do some, uh, bring anything Kiowa, Kiowa language, games and things for kids there. They're having a two week camp. And, and so I told them that I would, you know, come down and do something with them also. So just be ready, you know, just be ready. That's all I can say. And it's it's fun. I enjoy it. Well, wow. I'm glad to hear that, Judy, because, oh, because no one knows about us at all. And oh. who's and no one knows about you notice when they name in the news and whatever and all your I'm sure all your legislators uh, in state level and the national level, they know absolutely nothing. And so part of it, that's one way for them to know about Native Americans. Oh. And they need to know all the tribes that are here 
where they were from. So if you have the opportunity to go over all and say this is Indian country, Indiana, and all those were were all the tribes or that whatever they're all uh crowded into northeastern Oklahoma when they owned all the Midwest. Oh. And so they need to know that no one knows about us. That nobody oh. knows our history. And I like uh, uh, World War II history, and especially when I and so uh, I just got a book that my son gave me about a diaries of World War II about the Holocaust. And so everyone knows about Holocaust. There's even a Holocaust Remembrance Day. And so, and we live to that. We live to that. So that mm -hmm. needs to be pointed out. I mean, even though you're telling our history, so I don't know what uh, Ryan Walters will do to us, but you get the opportunity. This is, this is really good. This will give you an opportunity to tell what we have gone through. And this is our land. And you would never know that it was our land. They even oh. passed way back in the 18, I guess, 50s, 30s, the Chinese uh, act about uh, keeping the Chinese people out. In the end, they built the railroads, transcontinental railroads. And so they they just forget about us. I'm sure all of you know that they know absolutely nothing. We've been oh. obliterated from history, so we don't even exist. So tell me who knows about Native Americans. Oh. It's our war bonnets. That's it. Oh. So anyway, this is an opportunity for oh. you to sure. include all of us and tell that this is our country. Because oh. no oh. one knows that. Oh, Grandma, thank you for saying that because um, I took a history, U.S. Um, history class in grad school, and we talked about that, about how all our kids are taught Oklahoma history but really they're not learning anything about us at all. Um, they don't talk about that at public school. Um, and Ryan Walters, you're right. Um, it's kind of, people are scared to talk about the true history of, of Indians. And um, it, we, need, we need more voices out there. I, I'm shy about, you know, outside of class, outside of this class, I, I very am vocal about, you know, being proud to be Kiowa, but when you go out into public and you have to deal with those politicians and, and all of that, it's very difficult and a touchy subject in, in our K through 12 classes. But really, um, I feel like, you know, we, we need to start being able to speak the truth and yeah. that we're still here and, you know, they didn't beat us. We we still got our language. We still got people like you, and all my grandmas and uh, Grandma Martha, Grandma D, Grandma Dorothy, and Velma and Melody, and movers and shakers. You know, with our language program and cricket, and our language department. And I just want to say that you know I agree with you, Grandma, and thank you for saying that because we need to have more passion about speaking out about that. We're still here. And we're not afraid to, to say it. And we're not as afraid to speak our truth. And it re really happened to us. So I hope for um, lighting a fire in this combo tonight because I get on my little soapbox and- Well, I, I just- I you, Go ahead. I was just gonna say, excuse me, I'll be brief, but- just last week, you remember the post office released a stamp with Chief Standing Bear, the Poncas. And I, I was given a book about 
two standing there. It's been seven years ago, an autobiography. But anyway, at our Norman class the last time, I think you remember I said uh, that uh, we, we need to, we didn't have any uh, friends in Congress anymore. And so uh, I, that was part of it. And then there, and then there was this stamp. Hello. And, and it's a very interesting uh, and a moving story about Standing Bear. And there are many, many stories. He's not the only one that has a story. And so, so uh, there, there are just a lot of places and ways to. Uh, be an advocate for for the Native American that you pushed under the rug and you don't even know anything about them. And it always amazes me that here in the northeast corner of Oklahoma are those tribes, the Modocs, the Senecas, and all those when they owned all of the Midwest and the in the East Coast. So how did they get it? And I always say that, I, you know, you hear this gun rights and they always say it's in your constitution. And I always say, well, why is it in there that you have a right to defend yourself and your property? Who are they defending themselves against? As a Native American, because there were more of us then than, there, than them. And so... I just feel that that's, that was uh, taken into consideration, the Native American. And they probably did that. So here we are, small in number, so small that we don't even count. They, okay. tried, they tried to make us not count. I just, um, it's, it's still on topic, but you know, they, they made that film Killers of the, of the uh, Harvest Moon. But Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, and I know he's doing publicity. Just wrote a nice article. I read it. I read part of it today about how the government tried to kill us off and make it look like we were dead and gone, and that he thinks it needs to come out in the open. It needs to stop because I'm not that much younger than you, Grandma B, and. I can remember, I mean, I got caught up in the assimilation program. They said I wasn't even Native American. I was half, I knew my, I knew how to speak Kiowa. I wrote stories, I wrote screenplays that were very, made a lot of money for people, but they didn't put my name on it. They refused to, the government held me down. They said they could not have my name on it because they did not want people to recognize Native Americans as being intelligent or being able to succeed. And I mean, it's it's horrible. I mean, we've got um, Pascal Pulaf. Somebody should be making a movie about his history. He was a, he was a famous war veteran, you know, and he was Kiowa. And these things need to come out. So they know that there's more than just um, the Navajo code talkers. There were, there were Choctaw code talkers during World War I. But they don't know because people believe the history they see on TV and in movies. And that's really sad. And I'm done. I lost my soul back. Oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, I think that's uh, really um, exciting that uh, the language program is getting those type of calls, you know, to really uh, focus and um, raise awareness. Um, so, I got a I got a call from uh, one of there's like a little summer program that Weatherford Public Schools is doing uh, for their elementary and middle school students and I guess they're having like a family night type thing. And they wanted to know if the Native American Club could do something and they asked if uh, if there was anyone that could do. Um, kind of do a little booth with some information about uh, native plants and how uh, the tribes in this area use different plants. And so that's something that um, I'm working with uh, the, um, I know there's a lot of CNAs up here, but Kiowas were also here in this, you know, all throughout the Great Plains. 
Um, but uh, so we're probably going to have some Kiowa and Cheyenne and Arapaho um, do some little displays and like demonstration, like to talk about our sacred plants and, and also just like what we did with certain plants um, so that those students can learn. So things like that um, in communities that you would never expect, um, they're starting to like uh, Judy's got that opportunity down in, down in Texas, like I bet you they would have never thought of that a couple of years ago. <laughs> and I think that's really awesome. All right, all right. Hyundai, uh, Hyundai, Hyundai. Uh, so um, I wanted to uh, touch on the, um, the American Indian Arts and Crafts Act. Uh, we all know, or I don't know if you guys all know about the, about the act. Um, it's been put in place since 1990. Uh, and we just, they were just told that the BIA is trying to uh, make their own wording to allow non-natives. Um, there's going to be a major, um, I'm coming down there uh, Wednesday, so I won't be on. I'm going to try to get on, but I'll be in Lawton after the meeting. But at two o'clock at the um, U.S. Geological Survey Conference, conference room in Oklahoma, Texas Walker Science Center, Building 7, uh, that's 202 Northwest 66th Street, Oklahoma City, um, and that's Wednesday from 2 to 4. Uh, they're having an opening with a closed nation-to-nation -nation tribal consultation, uh, consultation, consultation at conclusion of consultation uh, consultation will proceed immediately to listening sessions open all and it's held in conjunction with red earth festival i don't care about the red earth i, I what i'm worried about here is um bia now we have two proposals on the board we have and there it's going to get confusing the senate is proposed um has a has a bill and their proposed language to amend the act. And that's to um, name who is an artist, American Indian artist and, not, and who's not. And like I said, they're trying to include non-native into that uh, yeah. as mass production. Um, uh, you know, like if the, if the artist was 50% owner of the business, then they can allow non-natives to make their stuff mass produced. Um, also, um, there's a lot of loopholes and a lot of um, loose wording that it's going to be, you know, this is going to be pretty detrimental, uh, detrimental to uh, the American Indian, you know, as a whole, you know, the, because our definition of American Indian, you know, protects us and as artists, um, and if we lose that uh yeah it's not going to be good so this brian newland uh bia agent is the one that's trying to do a uh american indian arts uh crafts act uh proposed draft regulations uh and that's by the bia and the policy and management so um their wording also so we need we need people to start standing up for this because they're allowing non-natives to come in and talk their piece too. So, you know, they're weighing this out. And with the Arts and Crafts Act, we became, you know, we had, we had, you know, there needs to be some amendments to it, but as a whole, it protects us as American Indian artists. Um, so if you can, uh, you know, I know this is the last minute, but I just had the Arts and Crafts Board call me and they're, you know, they're like, Kathy, if you can get down there and, and try to, you know, help speak because, you know, that was my passion is my Arts and Crafts Board. And I've been on that, you know, been involved with them since 2002. I don't, they don't pay me or anything, but I want to promote and protect our people. And that's one way that we're able to do that. Um, Missouri um, now has an Arts and Crafts Act that passed and it is amended to where um, 
you can't say, you know, Indian style. It's just, it's better. It's all around better. Um, states aren't allowed to um, sell as American Indian art because we're having a lot of states naming tribes. And this isn't a good thing either because states wasn't allowed to do any dealings, treaties or anything with American Indians. So why are they doing that today? I'm just uh, wanting you guys to understand. And if you know somebody who can, you can send and talk to these people and tell them how we feel, you know, as American Indians as a whole, that this is not good. You know, I don't see why BIA, BIA is doing this to us now, you know. Oh, ball. <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know. <laughs> Did you did you check to see if the Kiowa tribe knows about it? I don't know who to contact there. That's in, you know that is. Uh, well, you know. your uh, representative is Warren Tweeton, District Seven. I could call him tomorrow and see if he has you know. But like I said, I just talked to Lorenda over at the Cheyenne Repo, and um, they're sending a representative out. So it's pretty. This is pretty important because if they get their way, um, yeah, we're it's it's going to be pretty bad on us. It, you know, we're not going to be able to identify as a tribe because we have too many loopholes, and everybody's going to start jumping in. And next thing you know, nobody's going to be able to identify who's who. Well, they already do that to an extent, but anyway, not so much. But I think you should contact Warren Quiton. Okay. He's your, he's your uh, representative. Oh. Uh -huh. he's, he's a district seven, which it means everybody else, the whole world. So <laughs> outside, outside the ones in the, in the Carnegie area. Oh. Uh -huh. so, I will contact you because it's very important. I know what you're saying. I know they've tried that before out in New Mexico. You know, they used to, you know, the Indians used to sell on the, in Old Town, uh -huh. and Austin Crafts and in Santa Fe. And there was a period there, I can't remember in the 1990s where when it was hippie time that they used to have, they were trying to get in and be able to sell their crafts. But somehow the Pueblos got in there and blocked it, sort of. So anyway, it's just uh, Indians that are allowed to do that now, but there was a time when they were trying to, the non-Indians were trying to get in. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, that's, and it's, be, um, it's beyond the state uh, statute authority of the actual law itself that, you know, BIA is interfering, you know. So I don't understand, again, with BIA and why are they always into, you know, negativity on tribes, you know, and, and without, um, you know, they kind of do it like underhanded, you know. Um, a lot of people don't know about the Arts and Crafts Act, you know, and uh, once they, you know, uh, that's to protect our artists and, and that's all that is, but they're wanting to open it up wider, you know? So yeah, I'll get a hold of Warren and see who else I can, you know, cause I'm trying to get whoever we can that, you know, that way we can hopefully shut them down or, or get this off the table because, um, you know, we're going to be watered down and that's not going to be good. Well, the first American museum should be involved. Oh. Yeah, this is a big thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of the, I'm hoping a lot of, you know, the people um, that need to know about this, you know, like David Cornsilk, he, uh, he was the originator of the 1990 Arts and Crafts Bill, and I still talk to him, but he's running for Cherokee Nation chief now, and he doesn't have time, and it's like, well, wait a minute, you know, we need you, you know. But he's like, well, Kathy, he goes, you know it all. You, go, and, you know, I mean, not know it all, but what I'm talking about, you know, so maybe I can just get in there and, and you know, give them a what for, you know, and uh, as an artist and as a business mm -hmm. owner, uh, American Indian business owner, because they're even wanting to uh, regulate business owners. And 
uh, instead of being state, um, you know, how I had to go through my state and um, become a minority and woman business owner, and they name you 51% to 49%. And they're saying over at the Arts and Crafts um, Board that they, uh, that they, now the Arts and Crafts Board has nothing to do with this. It's the BIA saying that the Arts and Crafts Board will name you a business owner. And now if you're overstepping the state policies and what they do, you know, for business owners in their states, uh, that's overstepping, I think, you know. So, you know, I got this big spiel, you know, <laughs> I've been doing this for a while, you know, talking about Arts and Crafts Act for a long time. And, um, but I want, you know, if anybody wants to go and, you know, make, make it known that, you know, this is not right, you know, just, uh, I have the, if, if you want to, uh, call me 314-502-7814 and just pass it on, you know, because uh, this is, like I said, they're really uh, rewarding it to where it's open more, uh, a lot of loopholes, more loopholes than what our actual law is. And um, it goes against the truth in marketing law. So. Well, you, you might mention to Warren that it's very important because uh, uh, we have many artists, not those who paint and whatever, but just like Lori uh, 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 and uh, Courtney, there she is working. You uh -huh. know? And we're only, uh, the Plains tribes are actually the only ones who, uh, are striving and still do their work, do the work that, and the others, you know, tribes are, um, they didn't, they don't have the culture that we did and weren't able to hang on to it. So uh, I'm thinking about Jacobson House. I always worry about that. I wish that our tribe was, was uh, wealthy enough to, to give the, universities millions so that like the Chickasaws do so that they'll leave that uh, uh, gallery alone and and uh, keep it as as it was intended to be oh so, Omaha for sure <laughs> so um, yeah yeah I probably yeah. will be on Wednesday night I'll probably be like you know, just, I don't know, probably drained from the drive down there. And then two o'clock, I got to be there Wednesday to four and then, and then I'll be drained. Yeah, so I, would, you put your, would you put your number in the chat? Because if anyone's interested, I know I've got a friend, a couple of friends that, that they rely, it's their, it's their income, it's their crafts. Right. Business. So I, just in case they would, would want to contact you. Yeah, it's there. Oh, Thank you. Awesome. Aho, Kathy. Aho, Grandma D. Um, yeah, that's really important. Hopefully we can get, um, you know, people there to, to provide real, you know, input and hopefully prevent them changing that too much, you know? Right. I mean, because yeah. it's almost like um, they're, they're doing it to where they don't even want to talk to, they kind of point and uh, already know who's against what they're doing or trying to pull. And they're not allowing them to speak. So we're really going to have to get in there and try to get in on the question and answer period. You know, if we can get our voice heard, you know, and even if it has to be a filibuster, you know, I'm all about that, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Whatever needs to happen. I bet you uh, if you talk with uh, the District 7 um, representative, I bet you he'll uh, maybe ask to make sure that um, the chairman and vice chairman know as well, because um, oh. I know they've they've gone to you know those type of tribal consultations, um, also just you know different different parts. So maybe maybe we can get some of our leaders down there as well to support. Yeah, well they get a special hearing just for the tribal made uh, you know uh, nation to nation uh, just the tribe themselves so 
I'll give okay. him all the information, but still the important one and a closer one to us because the other hearings are in Las Vegas. Who's going to go to Las Vegas, you know, for this, you know, uh, Albuquerque. Yeah. Oh, well, you got a bunch of Indians down there, but you know, I don't, I don't see a lot of people standing up for the arts and crafts act because they don't understand it, you know? Oh. Uh, and uh, then you got Alaska, they're going to be at and Santa Fe, New Mexico. So they're allowing non-natives and American Indians to voice their opinion. And then they're going to go by that, you know, and if they're looking um, for more non-native opinions, then we're bumming. You know? Right, right. Well, hopefully we can get some people people down there to share. I'm glad that you'll be right, going down right. there as well, Kathy. And you know what's weird is one of the, the principal def deputy assistant secretary that's involved with this, her last name is Mooney. Oh. I don't know she's involved with Mooney, but her last name, and she's in Washington, you know. Oh. <laughs> wow what a so, coincidence yeah. <laughs> right and then the senate stepping in wanting to reword so there's two proposals going on at the same time wow yeah well, yeah lots lots going on lots happening i know uh lots been happening also with the supreme court too so there's a lot of cases that will impact tribes and tribal sovereignty so important to uh pay attention and you know give input where we can so, all right, well, thank you for sharing that, Kathy. Um, let's see here. So for next week, uh, we are going to um, start our um, session. It'll be 6.30 to eight o'clock next week. We'll do 30 minute Zoom breakout room rotations. So we'll probably spend the first 15 minutes until 6.45, you know, just kind of making sure everyone, you know, has a chance to ask any questions they want. And then we'll go into breakout rooms and start doing rotations and focusing on the topics. We'll, uh, we'll go with uh, the suggestions uh, that Courtney shared. So we'll have one for grammar, one for conversation practice, one for kinship and one for reading or doing the read, read aloud. Um, so what would be nice is to see if we can identify uh, our uh, teacher candidates or our learners to um, someone who would be willing to host um, or to, you know, just kind of be like the facilitator in each of those rooms just to help people with technology when we do that. So um, just uh, be prepared. So whoever shows up next week, we'll uh, see, see what we can do there. Um, all right. And we'll record just uh, remember when we do the breakout rooms, we can't record the breakout room. So the recording will basically show whatever's happening in the main room. Um, and then we can kind of give uh, verbal updates as far as what the other breakout rooms are working on. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's the plan for next week. And uh, with that, let's uh, get our closing prayer. And um, I'm wondering, uh, Grandma Martha Nell, they don't say. Oh. Oh, pardon my they only heed at all. Anger. Don't yell. <clears throat> Get all they. Um, they ain't angry, it's angry. Don't get all go. <clears throat> Get good to them. So other. Stop they go. And get my hand. No. Papa, y'all, more say that um, eight more teams saw a good gap. Good Sunday. More hands saw. A whole day get on so they hardly get on hey. they hardly get mama um they keep uh, the heavenly father uh we're here we're always gathered here to speak our language and try to share it and 
we are here to kind of teach the younger ones to learn it. And we're hoping they're going to share it with the other younger children in school so that that language can go on for a long time. Uh, we also thank you for all the blessings that you give us daily. Um, everything that you give to us, um, we can do it by ourselves. And we um, uh, thank you for mainly for our health so that we can be here to work with people. Uh, blessings on everybody that could be here to help in their families. <laughs> Praise your name. Amen. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Awesome. All right. Well, Hegaba Oi Bonta, Hegaba Oi Tong Tata. Oh, have a good week, everyone. Hega Emoi Bonta. Oh.